Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is episode four of Wrenching on the Rolla, a series of videos where I improve and repair my 2004 Toyota Corolla. Today's video comes out of necessity. I was out driving doing some spirited high RPM driving, uh, within the legal limits of course, uh, of the speed, and I noticed that it was getting warmer and warmer and it was a hot day inside. AC was stopped working, so what's going on? That's what we're talking about today. And a little spoiler, no refrigerant release or refill is going to be needed. So stay tuned. This video is a little bit backwards to most of them since I've actually already completed the repair and I'm going to show you the troubleshooting that you need to do to see if this is what's going to be right. Right down there you can see is the AC compressor, the pulley, and the clutch. Now I had the AC on in the car and the pulley was spinning, the belt was spinning, the engine was on but that was not spinning. I'll show you a video of that a little bit later. What that indicates is that for some reason, even though I have AC on, the computer is not engaging or is unable to engage the, the clutch using the field coil. So the first things you can do is, I watched a video and they were saying how you can swap this relay out with another one to see if the relay is bad. And then if that's good, you can also take this here, which is a pressure sensor and use a paper clip to bypass two of the wires which if your refrigerant was low then the computer wouldn't allow the compressor to turn on but if you bypass it it would kick it on. I tried both of those and I'll actually show you the simplest thing you can do to see what's going on and I'm going to show you that right now. And it involves this connector right down in there. Everybody knows that AC systems are complicated. But at their simplest, what they're doing is they're taking the mechanical power of the engine via the serpentine belt and putting it through the pulley into the compressor to compress the refrigerant to send it through the cycle so that you can get cold air. Now that's more complicated than we're going to talk about today, but what you can see is the center of the pulley, there's a clutch. Right now it's not engaged. However, when you press the button inside, what should happen is that should engage and begin spinning, which then transfers the power through the pulley through the clutch, into the compressor, turning the compressor. Then when you turn the AC off, it stops spinning. And now what's happening is that the computer is sending a signal to the relay to close the relay to allow 12 volts to the field coil, which then pulls that clutch in magnetically into the pulley, engaging it. Rather than checking relays and pressures and all that, if your AC is on in the car and yet your clutch is not engaged, the first thing you want to check is the field coil. Now this is the wire going straight to the field coil. Currently the AC is off and you can see that there's no power going through that wire using a test light. You could also use a multimeter. However, when we go inside the car, we press the AC button on, you should see that power is going to that connector. If you don't have power going to the connector, then you have a problem somewhere else. However, if there is power going through this connector, which you can see right now the light is on, and your clutch is not engaging, then your field coil is bad, and that's what we're replacing today. We know AC systems are complicated, but if you have the AC turned on in the car, and you have 12 volts going to that connector for the field coil, and yet the clutch is not engaging with the pulley, then you know that you have an issue with the field coil because it's not pulling in, even though it's getting supplied power and it should be pulling the clutch in. Now let's say that you have an issue where you have the AC button on, but you're not getting 12 volts. Then you have an issue with the relay might be bad or your, your pressure might be low, the computer's not sending the signal, wiring, something like that. That's different. And then on the other side, if you're in your car, you have the AC button on, and you see that the clutch is engaged, the compressor is turning, but yet it's still hot, then you have another issue where the compressor could be bad or you could have some other component is broken to where there isn't flow correctly or the pressures are wrong, something like that. And so the nice thing about just doing the field coil, which we actually got really lucky here that that's all I have to do, is we don't have to disconnect any of the AC lines, we don't have to recycle and recharge the refrigerant afterwards, everything can stay connected, and as long as you're willing to kind of wiggle around down there to fit in, you're going to be able to take everything off and on, leaving the compressor connected. That's what we're doing today. So here's what we're working with. Before I show you the parts, let me show you how we remove them. It's actually really simple. You can just use a standard breaker bar and socket, put it on the belt tensioner there and pull it back. That'll release the belt tension here on the serpentine belt. 
I removed my alternator, which is just two bolts and then a couple of electrical connectors. I have the harness pulled back here as well. That gives me plenty of room to get to the compressor. The compressor, AC compressor, is held on by one bolt on the top, two underneath. I have just the top one connected right now, which lets me show you how you're able to move it because of these soft lines being connected here. Once you take that bolt out, you can move the entire compressor back as well as angle it which is going to give you the room that you need to get a wrench in there as well as your ring clip pliers. I also pulled this piece of plastic out of the way which gives you lots of access from underneath. It's actually easier even to do it from underneath than it is from above, but again plenty of working room. Here's the parts that we're working with. It's actually really simple. You've got your field coil here which is just an electromagnet that when you provide power to it, it acts like a big magnet. Then you've got your pulley here, which spins. Anytime the engine is on, that serpentine belt is spinning it. It's got a bearing that it rides on. Then this is kind of like the flywheel, if you think about it, analogous to a clutch and flywheel on a car, which by a manual transmission, which by the way, I have a video on how I replaced my clutch and flywheel on this Corolla here at home with no special lifts or anything. So go check that out if you're interested, but anyways, then this here would be a kind of analogous to your clutch, which this is right here. Let me show you how these clips work is this small one here, smaller, retains the pulley. And I was able to get that off using these smaller plier, the right angle ones here. But this one here is the real stinker, is the one that holds the field coil in because you basically need not only ones with a bigger tip, but you also need enough room so you can get in there going straight because if you had a right angle one, it wouldn't quite reach right. I got this set at Harbor Freight. I'm actually really happy with it. It's a bit pricey, but you're not going to be able to get this done just using the $5 one that has the little, you know, interchangeable tips. It's not going to work. Anyways, so how this goes together is you've got your field coil right against your compressor. Then you've got your pulley here, which sits inside of there. And then this guy right here, these shims, which we'll talk a little bit about later, you have shims that go into here. This goes onto the shaft of the compressor. This connects to the compressor. This doesn't connect to the compressor rotationally. It does mount onto it, but the only way that the compressor operates is when this is pulled down by this field coil, the electromagnet. Otherwise, you've got a little bit of a gap the rest of the time. Then you turn your AC on, it clamps it down. I, you can just buy the field coil, but I bought the whole kit because this is the original components, it looks to be anyways, with nearly 240,000 miles. They're very worn. You can see these surfaces nowhere, not hardly any grip left in it at all. The field coil is actually what failed, but these certainly were in bad shape as well, whereas you can see the nice clean mating surfaces here. And if I put this on, you can even see by hand, I'm able to turn this and it barely grabs it at all, whereas this new one here, just sit it on there, it grabs right away. So with your new kit, you've got your new field coil, then all you're gonna have to do is put this in, ring clip, put this in, ring clip, and then the tricky part is these spacers, they just go in down here. You can start with all five, but what you're going to have to do is get your spacing correct. Now, the spec online that I read was 20 thousandths of an inch or uh, 0.5 millimeters. Don't forget to clean off the feeler gauge with some brake clean. You don't want oil contaminating, just like you wouldn't want on a clutch, a normal clutch. You don't want oil contaminating these surfaces. But you're going to put this on here, and then with the AC off, the coil not pulling, them, pulling it in, there'll be a little bit of a gap that you'll put the feeler gauge in and feel around it. And then if it's not correct, if it's not within the spec, try and get it as close as you can by using a different number of these shims here. Now let's uh, set the camera up on a tripod and I'll show you some electrical testing you can do on the coil. So why is it called a field coil? Well, because at its simplest, all it is is a coil of wire. Just like any electromagnet, you have wire wrapped around many, many times, and then you run current through it, and it creates a magnetic field perpendicular to the flow of the current. So using the right-hand rule, 
what happens is if you've got your current flowing this way, then it induces a magnetic field this way. Anyways, that's a little bit more advanced than what we're talking about here. How do we diagnose whether this guy is good? Well, I googled it and for these coils here, you should have a reading between 3 and 5 ohms. This is an auto-adjusting uh, multimeter. We have it set to resistance right now. So I'm going to go ahead and press my contacts together. Let it adjust and you can see the reading is right there it says 3.8 ohms. So 3.8 right between 3 and 5 so this guy brand new and is working correctly. Now there's two ways these can fail. This one here failed to where it is now an open circuit in that somewhere within the windings there's a break. Imagine me snipping this, this lead here the electricity can no longer flow. So when I put the multimeter on it, you can see you get nothing. The reason that it was saying some high mega ohms is because it was actually going through my body. Uh, if you touch, that's why anytime if you're working with electric probes, don't have your finger touching like both of them because your body can flow a little bit of current. But anyways, so with this here, uh, you can see it's zero, or sorry, it's not zero, it's infinite. Infinite, much different. If it, if it was zero or a very low amount of ohms, what you would know is that within the windings, two of the wires shorted where the insulation melted slightly and they're touching. So if you think about it, now instead of the electrons having to go through the whole coil, they're skipping. They're skipping this and they're just going through this because it's the shortest path. And so what you would see then is if you read it with your multimeter, it would have either 0 ohms or 0.1 or 0.5 or something like that would indicate that there's a short inside of the coil in here. Whereas mine failed an, o an open type of failure where there's actually a break in the circuit. But anyways, so that's how you can go ahead and test that there. And here's a real quick demonstration. I've just got a 12 volt motorcycle battery here. And you can see that if you hook this up, It's a magnet, just like you'd expect. And then if you unhook it, there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a residual field, but no longer a magnet. A few pieces of advice during reassembly. If you're having trouble holding the compressor at a steep angle for you to be able to get the clips on, just hold it with some sort of strap. It won't damage it or anything. These lines are real strong. I didn't like this connector that came with the new field coil. It wasn't a very good fit and it's too long. So I just cut my old ones off and you can see them down in there. I just reuse them since I think the OEM one's better anyways. And then lastly, it's going to be a little bit hard to show here. Hopefully you can see in there, there's that ring clip. And that was a real bear to get in. So what I did is I first took my pliers, you know, I'm not doing it right, but I got it on there. And then I took a tap and I just gently tapped along the ring to seat it all the way in there. And then one last thing is make sure when you're putting the field coil on, there's a tab in the back that you align so that it goes on straight. I've got the clutch back on with the bolt torqued down. I ended up using three shims to get it just about perfect. Two was too tight and four was way too loose. You can see here with three, the 20 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge fits pretty much perfectly throughout the entire distance. Here's a demonstration of the field coil being energized using that same motorcycle battery. You can see right now there's no power to the field coil and so the clutch is not engaged and the pulley spinning freely as if your AC was off. You can hear there I hooked in the power. That would be you turning the AC on. Field coil has pulled the clutch into the pulley, and now when I rotate the pulley, it's also rotating the compressor. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, it is pretty warm out. You want your AC system working, and one of the simplest things you can do at home without any fancy AC tools is replacing the field coil, pulley, and clutch on your AC compressor. 
So leave a comment, subscribe. You want to be ready because we're going to be doing cruise control in the next episode of Wrenching on the Rolla. So you don't want to miss that. Give me a like. I definitely appreciate it. I want to read all those comments. And unless you plan on hiding under a tree all day, get your AC working and get out there and drive. See you next time.